Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of Stygian Society. I backed this game a couple of years ago, totally forgot about it, and all of a sudden when it showed up at my doorstep, I was super excited. This is a, a cube dropping game. We're going to be dropping cubes for both the enemies and for our heroes down into this tower, and then depending upon what falls out onto the field or into the crypt, we get to use those to activate our abilities, but the enemies will be activating theirs with their cubes as well. So without further ado, we're going to do a really quick setup and then jump into the playthrough. I do want to mention in this game there are a few things that were missed in the rules and there's a few things that they had to clarify in the FAQ. So I read the full FAQ, but if things adjust after today's date, which is September 19th of 2020, I might not have that. So I will link, put a link in the description below for that FAQ because that will be continuously updated and I will try to play to the best of my abilities with the correct rules. <laughs> Let's jump in. When you play a solo game of Stygian Society, they recommend playing with three characters. Normally, they recommend playing with four. So if you play with two people, they want you to play two characters each. But they do have a two-player variant where you can play with just two people as well, just two individual characters. I've done that, and it actually has worked okay. Uh, but I understand that they want you to have the variety of abilities, which is why they want you to play with four different characters. Solo, though, is three. So I've grabbed the Doctor, the Knight, and the Seer. And what's cool, any of the base characters are actually double-sided, so you can have a female version and a male version, which is kind of cool. So I'm playing with the Doctor and the Knight being male, I guess, and the Seer. The Seer, I don't exactly know if this is in the expansion or not, because I haven't gotten the expansion material yet. But this is an additional hero, and it's only one-sided, so we're going to play with the Seer, uh, and she is female. Each character will have a basic level zero ability that they can use during the game. And then look at all these cards. These are all the different skills each time you level up that you're going to be able to choose from. Just just a plethora of them, and which is which is one of the awesomest parts about this game because every time you play, you can, you can set your character up a little bit differently. Now, when you play and you first start your game, you're going to randomly choose a level one for each of your characters. I've chosen my random level one skills right now. We'll go ahead and look at those as we start our playthrough, but that's all you need to do to set up your characters. Our sideboard over here is going to track a lot of different information. You'll want to grab this black token here to uh, track your peril. That's one of the ways you can lose if ever when you're in a specific room you get to 20 peril or whatever the room card says. Usually it's 20, sometimes it might be less. Uh, you will lose the game. We also, we don't individually have wounds. We have wounds as a team. So you will start at zero wounds and your max health will be 25. If ever this gets to here, we lose the game, but there are gonna be ways that we can increase this. For example, our level one random skill for the night is the party's maximum wounds are increased by two. That means now for the rest of the game, we have 27 total max health instead of only 25. Unfortunately, in the rule book, luck is not really explained, uh, but it is explained in the FAQ. You're going to start at zero. And what luck is, is if ever you have any luck, you can use it for one uh, cube of any color. So let's say I need an additional blue cube to do something. I can use luck for that. I can never have more than five luck. I can gain luck in two ways. One is just by any sort of card ability. A card ability might state, hey, when this thing happens, I can gain some luck. But also if ever two cubes or more land in the crypt in one uh, cube drop, then you gain one luck. And that's not in the rule book, so that's in the FAQ. <laughs> also, for our experience, we start at zero, and then you're going to place the other one here at eight. And this is kind of cool how this works. When you get to eight experience, we're going to level up. Then you move this over by one. You start back over. And then when you get to nine, we'll level up again, and then you push this back. So it, it gets a little bit uh, harder and harder to level up as you go. We're all going to have different actions that are on our skill cards, but we also have three generic actions. We can just do a generic attack action, and this is telling us what cubes we can drop, and then what we can spend to deal wounds. Uh, we also have our help here, which uh, any of these are gray. That means they're any color that we want. So we can grab any colors that we want, drop them. We can't actually do anything, but we're essentially helping our teammates. Uh, such a cool mechanic in this game because I can choose cubes that might not help me, but they'll help the next player that's going to go, and hopefully they can drop down into the field, and then when it's their turn, they can use it. Finally, we have our regroup, which can kind of help us clear the field if we see a lot of the enemy cubes, but we have to raise our peril by four. Finally, we have our chest deck over here, and we have our treasure deck over here. Now, there is a treasure deck for the upper and the lower rooms, because there's a total of six rooms that we're going to go in. Uh, the first three, you're going to use the lower, track, uh, lower treasure deck, and the 
upper three are going to use the upper treasure deck. Also something that I didn't mention, you have these status cards. They recommend giving you giving one of each type to each character. Uh, since I'm playing solo, I just have a stack here and I'll pull them when needed. If ever we get cursed, we would be using these. You can see over here on the left hand side, I have the different monster cards. We've got red, yellow, and black monster cards and our uh, little tiny minis that denote those types of enemies. Those don't need to be shuffled because you're going to grab ones specific to the room that you're going into. So just have them set to the side and have the miniatures next to them. This game is a diceless dungeon crawler, so to speak. <laughs> and so what we have instead are cubes. So we have the three enemy cubes. There's red, white, and black. You saw that matches the colors of the monsters that we have. And then we have the hero cubes, green, white, and blue. There's going to be 10 of each of those, and that's important for you to know because cubes will get stuck in the tower, and so that can kind of help you, oh, I only have four of these cubes left. That means there's six somewhere in the tower, so I might knock those down when I drop the next set of cubes. You'll want to shuffle up your lower room cards and your upper room cards. Now, your upper room you can set aside because you won't see those until levels four and five. Your lower ones you're going to use right away. You'll also want to set aside your mini boss mats and your final wizard boss mats to the side. If we get to level three, we'll take on a mini boss. And if we get to the final level six, we take on a wizard. If you have the Kickstarter version of the game, you got these Woe and Lamentations cards. There's nothing in the rulebook about them. Uh, so in the FAQ, it talks about how you can use these to make the game harder. Don't need it. Never have won yet. So not going to use those. I'd recommend not using them for your first player to instill until you start winning con uh, consistently. And then you can use these to make the game harder. Uh, <laughs> like, hey, oh, remove these different things. Yeah, I don't, I don't even want to look at them. And then finally, we have our cube tower. This is where we'll be dropping cubes in. Cubes will be coming out of here, maybe falling into the crypt, maybe just falling over here or all across the board. Uh, and then we will be using those to spend for enemies and then spend for ourselves as well. We start at level one. We're always as a group. So this is kind of our group mini. And then as we go, we can actually move across on the tower itself. You can see here, this is level five. We'd actually place the mini there. There's one for each level. Uh, I'm not going to try and show you the backside of the tower because if ever you move the tower when there's cubes in there, you can knock them over. So they suggest you don't do that. So I'm just going to leave this where it is. <laughs> but yeah, with that, I think we're ready to start. Oh, and I do want to mention, at least with the version that I have, and I think they're going to have that with all versions of the game, this tower fully assembled fix, fits in the box. They have a spot for it. Even these little things that are sticking out, no problem, which is super nice. And I really appreciate that because I don't want to have to take this apart every time and put it back together. I will mention that when you look at how to put this together, uh, floor five, you're going to see that in the instructions, it has a big hole in the center. Uh, and you're going to go, well, number five doesn't have that. Well, that's fine use number five where it says it's going to look different and that's okay they did not update that in the rules so or in the instructions to assemble the tower i think with that though we are ready to begin so how we start the game is we simply draw our first lower room card because we're at level one before i do that i forgot one item for setup and that's these status tokens just go ahead and you, they suggest having them flipped all upside down and set to the side on the board. I like just grabbing from a cup. That way I don't have to worry, are they all face down or face up? <laughs> nice and simple. I just have them in a cup and I randomly draw from them. So if you have a cup or something, I'd suggest doing it that way. Here we have our first level one room card. Let's flip it over. It looks like we have the dark night. So what we can see, there's lots of information on here. First thing, and I kind of wish that they had put this at the bottom of this uh, card, because what you actually need to do when you play this and we start fighting these enemies, we're going to turn it this way because this is going to be considered the front row and that's going to be considered the rear row. <laughs> uh, but let's first look at it like so, so you can see it. So the first thing you want to note is up here, this tells you your peril cubes. So every time you drop cubes for your hero, you're also going to drop one red, one yellow, and one black cube for the enemies. And then you have room effects where you see how we have no black enemies here. Uh, when we have black cubes at equal three, what's going to happen is we're going to have our peril go up by two. And you can see it with, uh, like I mentioned before, with the peril track, if that ever gets to 20, and you can see here, if it gets to 20, we're outmaneuvered, the heroes lose the game. So we don't want the peril to go all the way up to 20. We can't take terribly long defeating these enemies. 
You can see here though, there are parallel events. So at 4, 8, 12, 16, uh, 20 we lose. So th those other ones, we're gonna have different effects happen. Now, what I actually do to help me remember that is I put little tokens onto the parallel track to remind myself of that. Just so you can see, I've placed it at 4, 8, 12, and 16. 20, we lose the game, so I'm not putting anything there. <laughs> then what we need to do is set up the room itself. In order for us to move to the next room, we have to defeat all the enemies that are in this room. So we have three yellow, uh, three yellow enemies and one red enemy. And it's going to tell you here on the side, it says we've got a stoker and a clank. So I'm going to find those cards. Also, I just want you to understand how this works. You're going to have different skills that can only hit maybe the front row or the rear row. Uh, you're also going to have things where we might defeat an enemy. You can target any of them on here that your skill allows you to. But if ever you kill an enemy over uh, on, let's say, the first row, all, all the different enemies are going to slide to the left. If ever, for example, let's say we had two enemies up here and only one down here, any that are in the rear row would then slide forward like this. Okay, and that's important to know because certain uh, certain of our heroes will only be able to hit the front rank or the, the front row. So you're going to want to pull or move different enemies to that front row. We have three strokers that are in the front with one clank that's in the back. This tells us how much health they have, four and six. This tells us how much experience we get when we defeat those enemies. So every stoker I defeat, I'll get two XP and every clank I defeat, I'll get three XP. They each have different abilities. So this stoker each time a hero targets a stoker with a melee attack, the party suffers one wound and that can't be reduced. There's certain ways you can reduce uh, wounds that we won't be able to. When there is three or more of the yellow cubes in the field, deal two wounds to the party for each stoker on the floor, then the active player is weakened. Uh, for the for Clank, and I'm guaranteeing you will see that, so I'm not going to explain it here. For Clank, we actually reduce all damage to Clanks by two. So no matter what type of damage we're doing, we're going to reduce it by two. That's... That's brutal. Uh -huh. But we have one, two, three, four, five red. When there's five red that's in the uh, on the field, then it's going to deal five wounds to the party for each clank on the floor. Yeah, brutal. Now, something I want to mention. Remember that that room had peril effects for red and yellow? We're going to ignore those as long as there are enemies of those colors that are in that room. But let's say we defeat all the stokers. We're still going to be dropping that one yellow cube every round. And so then if we get yellow cubes equal to the amount that's in the room, that would be three on here. We're just going to increase peril by two. We have our room all set up and ready to go. So now we get to choose for our first room who gets to go first. After this, it's always just going to be player order. And they suggest starting with the knight. I usually find that to be a good idea. So right now, our knight has one active ability and one passive. The passive ability is always happening. We don't have to activate it. At the beginning of your turn, you can choose to do one support action. If I have four different support options as actions, I can only choose one. None of my characters have support actions right now, so we're not going to have to worry about that. <laughs> then we have to choose one active action. So we have our steel fist here, but remember, we also had the attack action, the help action, and the regroup action. There were general actions that we could do too. But I think starting with our steel fist is a good idea. So our steel fist here says melee attack, choose a target in the front rank, and then drop two blue cubes. So we are going to get to drop two blue cubes and a gray. So I can choose what color. And I'm thinking of choosing a white. And that's because our seer is going to go next. And in order for her to activate one of her abilities, she's going to need a white. So I'm going to drop those three. Now, we have to choose a target first. And then we're going to drop these plus the uh, enemy cube. So one red, one yellow, and one black. And I have to choose my target now. And that's important because sometimes... After you drop those cubes, peril might change and there might be an effect that uh, changes enemies or they might move rank. And so you need to choose your target of your skill first. And you're also choosing which skill you're going to use because not all of these cubes may drop out. So I might not have enough to actually target our, our trigger our, our ability here, which says deal three wounds to your target plus two additional wounds for every additional two blue you have spent from the field. Let's go ahead and target this stoker. Now, because of that and the ability that this uh, enemy has, each time a hero targets a stoker with a melee attack, which is what we're doing, we're going to have to suffer one wound. Normally, because of this meat shield card, you can see this symbol here. That means we have one shield during the knight's turn. So we'd actually get to block that one wound. But you can see here, it says it can't be reduced. So we're going to have to take that one wound. We'll move this up 
to number one. Here's our cubes that we're going to draw. Let's see what comes out of the tower. Oh, okay, we got one blue that's inside of the crypt. We didn't get two cubes in there, so we don't gain any luck. Any cubes that are in here are considered two. So I could spend this for two blue cubes, which is actually pretty awesome. That means with what fell, I actually have three blue cubes. I almost have enough to just kill that guy, but I don't. So what I do now is I'm gonna separate all the cubes that have fallen over to either side over here and then uh, we can see first if any of the enemies will activate and then we can activate. Looking here we have one red, one yellow, and one black and we have the total of three blue and one white. So what you first do is enemies get to activate first. You first look if you've hit the threshold for your red enemies and we needed a total of five red. Well we only have one so that's not going to happen. We then look at the yellow, we needed three yellow, we only have one. Our room needs three black for uh, its activation. We only have one black. So the enemies aren't going to go this turn. We get to then activate. So I'm going to go ahead and then spend this as two blue cubes to activate our skill to deal three wounds to that enemy. And with everything going on, I can't actually remember which one I targeted. Did I target this one or did I target this one? I don't know. <laughs> this is the first round. I'm just going to say that I targeted this one. Uh, and if that's not what I did, sorry about that. <laughs> but... Unfortunately, they don't have a great way of tracking health. They've got these little small hearts and these bigger hearts that you can use to be considered five damage. So these are considered five and those ones are considered one. So we've dealt three damage. They have four health, so we didn't kill that enemy. I'll try and remember who I targeted better next time. Sorry about that. Now you can see we're leaving this white and this blue on the field. And that means another player in a future turn can use those. But we're also leaving these for the enemy. So that's going to end our knight's activation. Let's go to the seer. The seer has two active skills that she can use. She has no support skills, so we can't do any support actions. We have to choose one of these. And you can see uh, one of them is dropping three green and one's dropping two blue. This one, though, is a projectile attack. We have to choose a target in the front rank. And then if we can spend a white and a green, deal two wounds to your target and an enemy directly behind your target. Increases damage by two wounds for every additional green and white that you've spent from the field. Well, I'm only having one white, and if I do that one, which is what I'm planning on, I'm not going to be able to get more white. <laughs> Unless I get uh, lucky. If I drop two in the crypt, I could get some luck and use it that way. I also, though, have my flying super null slap. In this one, I drop two blue. I have to spend one blue and one green to deal one wound to your target and one wound to the enemy on the right or left in the same rank, and then deal one wound to each target for each additional uh, blue and green spent. Cool. Yeah, I've never played with her. She seems cool. So I'm going to go ahead and drop those three, plus, of course, one black, one yellow, and one red. Let's see what we get. Okay, nothing landed in the crypt, which is a little bit of a bummer. But we do have two black now. We have two yellow. We did get two green. And we did get a second red. All of these enemy uh, enemy cubes still are not going to activate. We need three yellow. We need five red. And we need three black. So we can now activate our spiritual arrow. Which, of course, I didn't target anyone. <laughs> I'm going to do this right eventually. I was planning on targeting the one that's wounded because I wanted to kill it. So sorry that I did not say that. What we can do is spend one green and one white, and we are going to deal two wounds to your target and an enemy directly behind it. I'd love to deal two wounds to that clank, however, reduce all damage to clanks by two. So we dealt him two damage, he's not going to take any, he's, he's just going to brush it off. But we are going to be able to defeat this one stoker enemy. And because we can see on our card, we gain two experience. I'll definitely take it. When we get to eight, we can level up. Now, because there's an empty space here on the left, these two are going to scoot right on over. And now we're going to move to our doctor. Our doctor has the filled medic ability, which actually can resolve before enemy actions, which is really nice because we can actually stop them from activating. We can heal the party and we can actually remove cubes on the field of enemy colors. We also have our delicate touch. You may use this ability and this is what we call a response ability. So what that means is it's in response to a certain action happening. You may use this ability before taking an action to add green-blue to the field, or you may use this ability before opening a chest to reduce the peril by one. That will make sense later. I think, though, 
I'm going to use this right now. And you can see this symbol here tells you you have to exhaust this card and then it will not ready until the group levels up. Now they tell you to turn it sideways, but just because of the limitation of space, anything that's gonna be exhausted, I'm gonna place this black Aeon Zen cube on it <laughs> to notate that it's exhausted. But that means we get to place a green and a blue directly onto the field. That was a passive ability, I can still do a regular action. My regular action is I'm gonna do a, the generic attack, because I don't have an attack, I'm going to do a generic attack on I'm targeting this, uh, what is that, a stoker? But it's going to be targeting uh, with a melee attack, so we're going to take a wound for it. It's only our second wound. We're doing all right. You can see here we're going to drop a blue and a gray, so that gray could be any color. I think I'm just going to do two blue, but we still have to do all three of our peril cubes. I'm hoping for two to drop in the crypt. Hopefully there are two. No, nothing. If we look here, we have three red, still no activation of clank. Two yellow, no activation for stokers, but we have three black. That will activate our room. So what we'll do is we'll remove these three black, place them back in the supply, and we'll activate the room. Most of the time, the room activations are simply plus two peril. And why that's important is whenever an enemy activates, your peril is still going to go up by one. But when you do a room per peril effect, it goes up by two, and that's it. We'll move this up to two. Remember, our first thing that will happen, our peril event will happen at four. We get to deal one wound for each blue that we spend from the field. So I'm gonna spend three blue, all three that are on the field, and I'm gonna deal three wounds to this guy. Of course, they have four health. <laughs> yeah, I just can't seem to take these guys out in one hit. I think that means for our knight, we'll just do our regular melee attack, doing two blue and one white again. Yeah, or should I do a green? You know what? I'm going to do a green because I think we're going to have her do the flying super, super slap this time. So I'm going to do those three plus one red, one yellow, and one black. And we're going to target that same stoker, but that means we're going to take another wound because every time they get targeted by a melee attack, they're going to take a wound. And so that puts us at three total damage. And you know what? I was just about to pick this up, but I don't think I want to do my flying super slap because that's a melee attack. I want to be able to do the projectile attack, so I'm going to change this green to a white for sure. Let's see what we get. Uh, oh, we got a yellow that dropped in there. So when a yellow, or I should say an enemy cube drops in there, they get a plus two as well. So we now have two, three, four, yellow. We start with our red. We have one, two, three, four. He needs five. That means next time he's going to be likely dealing us five points of damage. <laughs> For yellow, we have one, two, three, four, five. They only need three to activate. So they're gonna go ahead and use three, and you always have to use them the most effectively. So I, uh, I'm gonna use two from here and one from here for a total of three. It means I still have two cubes left. And I should mention, let's say they still had enough cubes to technically do their action another time. They will only ever do it one time. So we have deal two wounds to the party for each stoker on the floor, then the active player is weakened. There's two stokers on the floor, so we're going to take four wounds, and then uh, this is our knight. Our knight is going to become weakened. We'll take those four wounds, one, two, three, four, cry a little bit, and because an enemy activated and we removed cubes, we had to increase our peril by one. Now, unfortunately, our knight has been weakened, and this states that for each status token on this card, remove a cube of the same color from the field, not the crypt at the start of your turn. And how we determine how many cubes we have, it said that he was weakened. He didn't say he was weakened twice or anything like that. So all we're going to do is grab one of these status tokens. This is denoted as a white cube. In order for us to get rid of this, we cannot get rid of this at the turn that we obtain this uh, condition. But at the end of our next turn, we can pay a white cube from the field. Uh, and let's say he had, let's make an example here. If I had a green and a white, I could spend one green and one white to get rid of both of these, and then that would cure my weakened weakened state. I could also, let's say there's only a white there, I could give up that white, I'd still have this one. Uh, but for us right now, what this means is next turn, at the start of our turn, we're going to actually have to remove a white cube from the field if there's one there, which is a bummer. The nice thing is we had no black cubes on the board, so we've ended the enemy activation. I'm going to use two out of the three blue cubes here to deal three wounds to that blasted stoker that only had one health left. We're going to kill him. That will allow us to gain two more XP. We're halfway to leveling up. Once again, because we attacked the enemy at the farthest left, this guy is going to move over one space. 
we're going to have to kill this guy, and then Clank will finally move forward. Because I don't think we have anything that can attack the rear row yet. No, I don't think I do. We'll move to our Seer. We know what we're going to do. Projectile attack, front rank. There's only one enemy in the front rank, so I don't have to show you that. The most we're going to be able to do is two wounds, because there's only one white, unless we can get some luck. Uh, I'm just going to hope, but yeah. Uh, I should mention, if ever cubes that are in the supply are empty on the hero side, that just means we can't drop them. Uh, so that's something you want to watch. For the enemies, for every enemy cube that you can't drop, you're actually going to increase your peril by that amount. So if I needed to drop a black cube and I had no black cubes, I'd increase peril by one. Let's see what we get. Apparently all the black cubes are getting stuck inside the tower. And look at all of these greens. I wish we could use more of them. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, one, two, three, four, five, we have five red. So we're going to spend all five and clank right here states we're going to deal five wounds to the party for each clank on the floor. There's one. Yeah, this room is no fun. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. This seems like, yeah, a good room. <laughs> we're also going to push up our peril by one because that enemy activated. And now we have to see what that event is. At level four, heal each enemy of two wounds as dark magic pours through the room. That's great because none of the enemies are damaged. I knew that. That's why I kept trying to focus on one enemy and kill them before that happens. If we get to eight, though, we're going to have to add two more stokers to the front rank. So I'm hoping we can take these guys out before that happens. However, we do still have three yellow here. And you remember, the stokers activate with three yellow. Uh, so deal two wounds for uh, to the party for each stoker on the floor. Then the active player is going to be weakened. So now we have two players that are weakened. Let's go ahead and see what status token she gets. She's going to get a green. That's great. We've got tons of green. So at the end of her next turn, she can spend a green to get rid of that. Two more damage puts us all the way up to 14 and five peril. <laughs> yeah, this might be a quick game, you guys. We're already almost at half. Well, actually 14, 28. Yeah, we're pretty much over half health at this point. And of course, we're only going to be able to spend one green and one white. We're going to deal two wounds to that enemy. It has four health. So we're going to deal two wounds, and we deal two wounds to the clank in the back, but that's useless. Can't do anything to him. It's our doctor's turn to go, and I think let's go ahead and do our field medic. We're going to drop three white. Uh, we're going to also have to drop one of each of the perils. Now, what I'd love to do is leave one of these whites for the seer because she would be able oh man she'd be able to use those whites to deal more wounds i think we're gonna have to do that but in order to activate this ability i need three whites so i guess let's just see if any fall in the crypt i should have mentioned we had some cubes actually go off of the field that doesn't matter they're still included uh you know what the designer actually said is he actually put this in a box a little bit to help prevent that from happening yeah so if they fly off just make sure to find them and, and they still count uh, let's drop them. Oh, great. We, hey, look at this, though. We've got two cubes in here. Unfortunately, they're the enemy cubes. But because we had two cubes and one drop drop into the crypt, we're going to gain one luck. I'll take that. We're going to spend all three white. And remember, we get to go before the enemies. Normally, this does not happen. We're going to heal ourselves for three. So we're going to go from 14 down to 11. And then you may remove one cube of your choice from the field, but not the crypt. Well, the only enemy one that we'd want to remove is this black one. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that black one. Uh, then it says for each extra white that you spend from the field, you can heal an additional wound and you can remove one more cube. But I don't want to spend my luck there. We activated first, so now we need to do the enemies. Do we have three yellow? No. Do we have three black? No, we have two of each. So now we'll just move to the knight. And the first thing we need to resolve is his weakened state. Technically, he'd need to remove one white from the field because of his weakened ability. There's no white, so we don't have to worry about that. We're definitely going to use our steel fist here. We're going to drop two blue and a white. We're going to target that stoker because we have to. But we're going to take another wound, you guys. We're going to drop ourselves back to 12 damage. And then we're going to do one black, one yellow, and one red. Let's see where these fall. Okay, we got a blue in here, but we only got one, so we don't gain any more luck. Enemies will activate first. We have two red. We have two yellow. Don't have to worry about it, but we do have three black. Three black means we'll use these and increase our peril by two. I think it's safe to say at this point, this number eight one is going to happen no matter what. <laughs> we are, though, going to be able to spend that one blue cube that's in the crypt, and that's going to allow us to deal three wounds. We already had two damage on this stoker, so we just defeated the final stoker for now, and we'll be able to gain two XP. I'll take that, two more, and we'll level up, 
And if I see here, the clank is worth three, so we should be able to level up if we can somehow take that clank out with six health and a reduction of two for all attacks. Now at the end of our turn, we're going to go ahead and spend that one white that's on the field to remove this status token. That way we're no longer weakened. We'll now move to the seer and we're going to have to remove one green cube because of our weakness. We have four green and two blue out in the field. Oh, and I should mention this, uh, the, the clank did get pushed up into the front row. That means we can target him with our flying supernal slap. We're going to go ahead and drop two blue. Then we will drop one yellow, one black, and one uh, red. But what's nice is we can use blue and green to deal wounds. And we can deal one wound to each target for each additional blue and green spent. Well, I've got two blue and four green on the floor. Hopefully we can do some damage with this. I want to see lots of blue, lots of blue. No, instead I got tons of yellow and only one blue. I do think, though, I had two drop in here, so that's going to give me a second luck point. That actually is super nice. We have a total of two plus two, which is four for red. One more and he's going to attack us for five. But we do have two, four, or I should say three, enough for the room. The room only needs three yellow. You can see that here it needed five red, three yellow, or three black. So we're going to increase our peril by two, which means we're going to have two more stokers show up. But I'm going to remove this one for two and this one for three. So I always have to do it the most efficiently. I couldn't use this two and the other two for four, but only needed three. I had to do it if I could by only spending three points worth. We got close, but weren't able to do it. We're now at nine peril. We're gonna have to add two stokers to the front rank. At least they're in the front rank, but ugh. Now there's only one black, so we're good for black. Now we get to activate. So we'll spend these to deal one wound to your target. Our target is Clank, which, by the way, he's going to negate that one. But then we're going to use these two for two. He's, neg he's going to negate that. We're going to use this one for three. He's going to take one point of damage for that. And then should we do it? Yeah, we've got two luck points, but I could use the luck points for somebody else. I think I'm just going to leave it this way. So we're just going to deal a total of three wounds. One, two, three. Two of them are going to be stopped for the for Clank. So Clank's only going to take one point of damage. But what's nice is we can also have the uh, one enemy that's to the right or left of them also take one wound. So we'll actually have that um, Stoker that showed up will take three wounds. Man, actually, you know what? Four would kill it. So let's go ahead and do it. We're going to... We have one luck to, uh, we're going to use one luck and we're going to use this green. So that luck we're going to use as a blue. That means we're going to deal four points of damage and that's just going to kill this stoker <laughs> that just, just showed up. And we did not target him with the melee attack. We actually targeted Clank so his effect does not go off. At least that's how I'm reading it. That does also mean Clank suffered two wounds out of the six. He is going to be a tough cookie to crack. Boy, he... <laughs> two damage we have to deal four more oh man the nice thing is we'll gain two experience points that's actually going to push this up to here and now we have leveled up when you level up any exhausted cards will be refreshed and now what we get to do we can either choose any other level one skill that we want or we can randomly choose a level two skill so you want to think of it this way whenever you move to that next level of skill cards you have to randomly choose your first one and then any future level ups if you want to grab a skill from one you already have one in you actually get to choose for our field medic i'm going to grab the thirsty blade because it works well with blue cubes which works well with our knight and if we defeat the enemy with this attack, we can actually heal the party by one wound. Now, this is only a one-time use, but if you actually kill an enemy, you can actually refresh this and use it again. For our knight, I decided to randomly choose a level two. We have Crystal Overlord. This We can add an additional, look at all those cubes and grays are wild, to the tower during your action. At the end of your turn, if this floor has any enemies left on it, remove all blue from the field and crypt. Raise the peril by one per blue removed and, uh, from the field and two per blue removed from the crypt. So if I use this, I better make sure that either I'm killing the last enemy <laughs> or I'm using all the blues to deal damage. And I can't just spend blues if there's no damage to do. So I've got to watch out when I use this. But wow, that's kind of cool. And these are all not blue. So I, you know, potentially not blue. But that can really be helpful for our other players. 
For our Seer, we also went with a random level 2, and we have the Flying Supernal Blast. A melee attack, choose a red or black target in the front rank. Oh, interesting. We have to drop 3 blue. This one, we actually can spend one of the enemy cubes, which is a bit nerve-wracking because if they actually use them, there aren't any there. Deal 3 damage to the target enemy, and deal 4 damage instead if you have both Flying Supernal Slap, which I have Flying Supernal Slap, and Flying Supernal Punch. I don't have the punch in play. So right now this will just deal three damage. I can't adjust it. I do have a shield though. I may have already forgotten about the shield with our knight. <laughs> uh, so I need to remember that both the knight and the seer now have one shield. The seer unfortunately has no green cubes left on the field to be able to remove her weakened status. So we're going to have to leave the weakened status. It is what it is. We're going to now move to the doctor. I'm going to go ahead and use our delicate touch to put one green and one blue in the field. I want those in the field so we can use them. And then we're going to do our Thirsty Blade. And we're going to have one, two, three, four blue that we're going to drop. We're going to focus on attacking that Clank because the next peril, they're going to heal by two. I want to take him out before that happens. <laughs> but we have to drop one red, one black, and one yellow with it. And remember, technically, this is going to exhaust this as well. We still have one luck left, and I'm really hoping some of these blue cubes will drop into the crypt. Let's see. Nope, none of them do. Instead, we're going to have Clank activate using all five of these red cubes. And he's just going to, you know, deal five wounds to the party for each Clank on the floor. <laughs> I sure as heck hope I can find some healing elixirs inside of the treasure chest that hopefully we'll get when we defeat this room. <laughs> Remember, I moved up that peril as well. We're now at 10. If we get to 12, they're gonna, each enemy is going to heal by 2. And I say that because I have a total of 3 for our yellow here. That's going to activate our Stoker. That's going to deal 2 wounds. It's also going to weaken our Doctor. So he's going to have a green, uh, a green status token on his weakened card, which means at the start of his turn, he's going to have to remove a green cube from the field and of course we're going to take two more wounds for that and this is going to get pushed up to 11. We'll then spend one two three four five of our blue plus one luck for six. That is six points of damage minus two for the clank uh, because of his ability so we're dealing four points of damage but he already has two wounds. Four plus the two is six. We're going to defeat this gosh darn clank. <laughs> Oh, thank goodness. So we're going to defeat him. We'll gain three XP for that. And uh, since we were able to defeat, so if this kills your target, heal the party one wound and then immediately refresh this ability. So we have our thirsty blade back. Oh, that's sweet. And we have a green cube. Let's go ahead and just, oh no, we can't do that because we just got weakened this round. We'll have to wait till next round. All we have left is this stoker. They'll move all the way over to the left. We'll gain three XP and heal one wound. Our knight will go next. He's going to go ahead and exhaust his crystal overlord. Because remember, that's our one support we can do a turn. We're then going to drop two blue using our steel fist. We're going to have two blue from this. So that's four. We're going to take a chance with one, two, three, four more here. I'm going to take one more of those. And then I'm going to take for the other ones whites. One, two and three. Let me just make sure I have the total amount right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do I get one more? Yep, that's right. I'm going to do four white and actually me over. No, I mean, yeah, I'm going to do four white and four blue. I'm hoping that I'll have enough to just kill the guy. But remember, if ever I have blue sitting, sitting out at the end of this turn, I'm actually going to have to increase peril for it. We are targeting that stoker with a melee attack. So we're going to go to 18 points of damage. And let's drop our cubes and okay they're all over here that's great we need a total of five red to activate we don't have that we need a total of three yellow we don't have any yellow but we do only need three black to activate the locations black ability which is just increasing peril by two that's okay with me we'll go past this 12 peril track and we need to see what that is 12 states heal each enemy of two wounds as dark magic pours through the room well great he's not damaged yet but he's going to be damaged soon. We're going to activate our Steel Fist using two to deal three wounds and two more to ad deal additional two wounds for a total of five. They only have four health. We just took them out and gained two XP and we cleared the room. 
we'll gain the two XP, we're up to five. We get to nine, we can level up again. Now it's important to note what the peril is at. We're at 13 peril. I'm gonna remove this, and uh, then we'll reset this. What we can decide now is if we want to open the treasure chest. So you can see here in the upper right hand corner, there is a symbol here for a treasure card. That means that we can open up a chest card and then gain one treasure card. Now there's been an FAQ about this because there's certain rooms that have two treasure uh, tokens on them or two treasure card symbols. Those ones, from how I'm reading the FAQ, you still only draw one chest card, but you actually get two treasure cards. So you just want to look up here. This will denote how many treasures you get, but you will only ever draw one chest card. Now these chest cards are generally bad, uh, but when you reveal them, if your peril is uh, less than the number that's on that chest card, you're safe. But if it's equal to or greater than what's on that chest card, then you have the negative effect happen. I think let's go ahead and take the chance. Uh, some of these can be bad, but I definitely need some treasure. I'm hoping for something because uh, I need it. Uh, we have a nine. Bummer. That means we're going to have to activate this because our total peril was 13. This is feel good. Oh, that actually sounds good. In addition to treasure, this chest contains a small healing vial. Huh. Cure the party of up to three wounds. Well, I'll take that. That doesn't normally happen. We'll go from 18, one, two, three, down to 15. And then we get to draw one treasure card. And we have a crystal shard. So down here, it's a response. It is a one-time use, because you can see it's got this X here. We'll use it and we'll discard it. And this means no hero needs to have this. It's a party item and we can choose when to use it. It says, after drawing a new floor, you may use this item to discard that floor and draw again. You cannot use this item on the mid-boss or wizard floors. Whoa, that's kind of cool. We could use it right if we find we have a room that we didn't like, like this one. This one was brutal. So now that we've finished one room, we're going to take all of the cubes that are on the board and uh, that we have used for our abilities and place them back into the supply. But there's still potential cubes in the actual cube tower. We don't know. Well, we could count and find out. Uh, now, what we're going to do, we don't get to heal, we don't get to do anything like that, we simply draw the next room card, and we get to see what we're going to attack. We do get to move our party up to floor two. Our next floor is the machinations of the court. So we have a marionette and a fae. The fays are pretty terrible. They have nine health, and if ever you get this many black cubes, which I believe is seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you just immediately lose the game. <laughs> So is this a good one to redraw or do I take my chances? Because there's only three enemies here. The marionettes look pretty gross as well. So, uh, I mean, read this. Only two yellow to activate. Deal one wound to the party for each marionette. So there's two out. But then you're going to remove all yellow, dealing one additional wound to the party for each one removed. So they're likely going to deal at least four points of damage uh, at the beginning. They have five health. But, I mean, we're strong. Stronger. <laughs> Uh, it could be a worse room. Let You know what? I don't like dealing with the Fae because you're playing with luck. So I'm going to use my crystal shard. I'm going to discard this and we're going to draw a new room. Well, I didn't want to deal with marionettes. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We're dealing with them anyways. And we have riders. This is called pulling strings. We have events at 4, 8, 12, 16, and we lose, it looks like, at 20. You already saw the marionettes. They have that 5 health. They're going to be annoying. These riders are only worth 2 XP. They actually only have 4 health, but damage inflicted to the rider is reduced by 1 for every monster in the row in front of it. And then with 3 black, you're actually going to add 1 yellow and 1 black to the uh, one red to the field for each rider on the floor at the end of the turn. We have no red enemies, so we're just looking for 3 red cubes. We'll then activate the plus 2 peril, and you can see here we've got 3 yellow and 2 red. So our seer is first. Let's see what we want to do. First things first, she is weakened. But the thing is, is we have no green cubes on the field. So we can ignore that for now. So now we have to decide what do we want to do? <laughs> These are not great, really. I mean, we could drop three green, but we're not going to be able to activate that. We could drop two blue. We're not going to be able to activate that because we don't have a green. And we could drop three blue here. We can choose a red or black target in the front. We don't. We actually can't even do this one because we don't have a red or black target in the front. So because of that, I think I'm just going to do the help action. With that, we're going to trigger no special abilities, but I'm going to do two blue and two white. Also doing our regular peril cubes, one red, one black, and one yellow. We're just looking to see if we can help our team as well as maybe help ourselves in a future round. 
And oh, we get two cubes in the crypt, so we're gonna gain one luck. We start with the red, we only have one out of three. Then we go to yellow, we definitely have two. So we have the two here. We're gonna spend the two to activate them. They're going to deal one wound to the party for each marionette on the floor. There are three. And then we're gonna remove the one remaining yellow here and deal a fourth wound for that. You know, this might be a really quick game. <laughs> we're already at 19 out of 20, 27. Oh wait, we have one shield, right? Cause we're the seer. So we'll block one of those. We're at 18. I'm sure I've missed that before. Uh, since an enemy activated, we're going to push Peril up by one. We'll now move to the Doctor, and I should probably try and heal us, but I think I'm going to use our Thirsty Blade. Once again, we can ignore the Weakened because <laughs> we don't have uh, any green on the board. And I guess doing our Thirsty Blade, we will heal up a little bit as long as we kill an enemy, and I think we should be able to. We're going to target that Marionette in the middle, and we're going to drop three blue, one white for this, and our three here for our enemies. We'll drop our cubes, none dropped in the crypt, bummer. The nice thing is no enemy activation because we don't have three red, we have no yellow, and we only have one black, we need three. So let's go ahead and spend uh, two, three, four, five. That's gonna deal five wounds and just straight up kill this marionette for two XP. Two XP, thank you very much, and heal by one. And don't forget, we'll be able to ready that thirsty blade since we did defeat an enemy. So now I'm going to do the one second to the right. We'll, we'll do a steel fist attack. I'm going to do two blue. It's silly to do a green because the seer would have to remove it because of her weakened. Uh, so I think I'm just going to do a third blue, I guess. I'll do three blue and then one of each. I mean, I could do a white, but yeah, you know what? Nah, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it. I'm going to keep the three blue uh, just in case. We need four blue cubes worth on the board to be able to take out that marionette with one shot. Oh boy, we have no problem with that. Looks like we're gonna have lots of enemy activations. We're gonna go ahead and spend all three red to simply increase our peril by two. That's no fun. One away from four, I haven't even read that. I don't even wanna know what it's gonna do. Then there's two yellow here we're going, going to spend and that's going to deal one wound per marionette on the floor, so that's two. There's no more yellow to spend, so we're just gonna take two wounds for that. Oh, you know, only moving up to 19. And of course, that will increase our peril. We'll go to four and we're gonna have to activate that. Number four is if any riders remain on the floor, of course they remain on the floor, the active hero is weakened twice. So we know what weakened is. <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and grab two of these. So we're gonna have to get rid of a blue cube and a green cube to get rid of these. Finally, we have our riders here and we're gonna use all three black to activate that and it states uh, add one yellow and red to the field for each rider on the floor at the end of this turn. Well, I'm not taking out any of those, so I'm simply gonna put two yellow and two red right out on the floor. Since an enemy activated, we'll push this up to a five. We are though going to be able to handily deal with that marionette. We're gonna spend the one in the crypt for two, so that's gonna deal three wounds, plus two more for two more wounds for a total of five, that will take them out. We still have two blue out on the board, which is nice. And that's going to allow us to level up. Because we defeated that enemy too, this rider will get pushed up to the front. Now we'll be able to target him. Two more XP. We'll go to nine. We'll start back over. And now let's level up. I decided to go for a level two for the doctor, so it had to be random. We grabbed the untouchable. Each time you exhaust an ability or item, you may also remove a cube of your choice from the field, but not the crypt. <laughs> So if I keep using these thirsty blades because I have to exhaust that, each time I do that, I can actually remove one of the cubes. That's amazing. I got to choose my level two for the night because I already had a random level two that I picked. I could have chosen to grab a random level three, but I kind of wanted the chain gauntlets because it lets me get more green on the board and gives me more wilds to help the seer because the seer needs multitudes of different types of colors to activate her abilities. Speaking of which, I decided to grab the flying supernatural punch for the seer. So now I've got the, sl the, the punch and the slap. So now this will deal four damage. And with that, we're going to move to the Seer's turn. We now have a black enemy, the Rider, in the front row. So we are going to do this. We drop three of blue. Okay. And then we've got one of each color, the black, the yellow, and the red. But if we can use the red, white, and a blue, we'll be able to deal a total of four damage to him, <laughs> which is exactly what we need. I should mention that we are weakened, but once again, it's green and we have no green cubes uh, on the field. 
I have two red on the field, so this is a little risky because if this red comes down and it doesn't land in the crypt and I only have one more red out, it's going to use the red to increase our peril by two and then I won't have a red to use for my ability. Oh, maybe this is too risky, but I'm doing it anyways. Oh, of course. No, the red of course had to come out. It's right here. Well, that was poor planning on my part. <laughs> we have our three red here. That's just activating our locations effect. We'll increase peril by two. We'll move this up to seven. We'll then spend two yellow to activate our marionette. It's going to deal one wound to us because there's only one marionette there plus one wound for this yellow. So that's two wounds. Not only does the two wounds stink, but that's also going to push up our peril and whatever event happens at number eight is going to happen now. At eight, if any riders remain on the floor, the active hero is weakened twice by horrid magic. <laughs> yeah, so she's going to grab two white. Oh, that's terrible. We're going to want to use those white cubes. I talked about the seer not having the right cubes, but guess what? I have one luck. I can go ahead and use that as any color. We're going to use that as red. That means we can spend the blue and white that we have here to deal four damage, which is exactly what we need for that rider. That rider has four health because it's in the front row, so it doesn't have any of this reduction. We just killed the rider and gained two XP. We now only have two enemies left. We'll move up our XP to two. Moving to the doctor's turn, he is also weakened, but once again, it's green cubes. We don't have any out. We're going to do our field medic, dropping three white. <laughs> this should not even be a question. We'll do one black, one yellow, and one red. I actually think I'm going to change this white to a green, just because if I can actually get that green down, I can then remove my uh, weakened state so we're not all three weakened. <laughs> so let's see. Come on, green. Oh, the green did come down. We'll spend three white here to heal by three and be able to remove this one black cube. Then we're going to use both of these to heal up for two more. So that's going to heal us by five. So we're going to go from 21 down to 16, uh, which is super nice. And then at the end of our turn, we will give up this green cube to get rid of this one green status cube for our weakened state. And we're no longer weakened. Everyone else is. <laughs> at the start of the knight's turn, we're going to have to remove one of the four blue cubes from the field because of our weakened state. And then I think... We're going to use, oh, this one, we can use this for green. Yeah, let's do this one. But we actually already have three blue out. Never mind. I'm going to do the steel fist. I have to attack the marionette that's in front of me. So that's going to give me two blue, and I'm going to add another green. Then I'm going to go ahead and use, oh, I don't know if I want to use the crystal overlord because I'd have to have two more blue, and I have to spend all the blue, and I wouldn't. So instead of be pushing up peril. Yeah, I think this is all I'm actually going to drop. And I'm going to drop one of each of these. You know, I love the choices in this game. It's so fun. We have to target the marionette that's in front of us. That's in the melee range. And looking here, unfortunately, we're going to activate both the yellow and the black. So the yellow goes first. Marionettes are going to spend two of these. And they're going to deal us just one wound. So we'll go from 16 to 17. We're also going to push up our peril to nine. Then we're going to spend all three of these. Uh, for our black rider and uh, at the end of the turn and we're not gonna be able to kill him We have to place one yellow and one red equal to the amount of riders out. We only have one rider So I'm just gonna put these out now and we're gonna increase our peril to 10 at 12 is the next event In order to defeat that marionette we need to do five points of damage So I've got two of these for three and I'm gonna use the other two. Oh man, there isn't any left I was hoping to get rid of my weekend, but I'm not gonna be able to it is what it is. I think it's much better that we defeat the marionette for the five. Uh, so that's going to give us two more XP and that defeats the final marionette on the board. So that will push up the rider to the front. We'll gain the two XP. And then at the end of our turn, we're also going to lose this green. So we can at least get rid of this green status token on our weakened state. We still have the blue one. I'll take the two XP though. We're already at four. We just need six more to level up. The Seer is weakened with one green status and two white status tokens, but we have no cubes on the field. It's actually really hurting us. So all we're going to be able to do is the help. We could do the gener generic attack over here, but we need to be able to do four points of damage. I just don't see that happening. <laughs> so instead, we're just going to do that, followed by our three peril tokens. Maybe we'll get some luck, but remember, we, we can't do any activation for ourselves. The Seer is definitely more challenging of a character, and I like that. 
Oh, we got a blue and we got a red in there. So we gained one luck, which is cool, but that definitely means the red's gonna go off. We need a total of three red for that activation, and that's just going to be for the room, increasing peril by two. We're at 10 before, we're now gonna go to 12. 12 stinks, you guys. At 12, we're gonna have to add one marionette to the front rake. Well, get this. Now that they're here, and since you do red first, followed by yellow, we have two here. <laughs> so they're gonna get activated. Remember what they do? One wound for each marionette. So we'll just take one wound, we're at 18, and then if there's any more yellows, they'd spend them to deal additional wounds, but we don't have any. I think, though, that means we should be able to take these guys out, hopefully, within the next two turns. Moving to the Doctor, we're going to use the Thirsty Blade, and we have each time you exhaust an ability or an item, and we are definitely exhausting the Thirsty Blade to do this, uh, you may also remove a cube of your choice from the field. I'm going to remove the black, because the black puts more red and everything from the rider uh, off of the field, which is nice. And I'm going to do three blue plus... I've got a ton of blue out. Let's do another white. So three blue and a white. And then we're going to target that rider for sure. We need to be able to do four points of damage. Okay, only one went in. And of course, it's red. We have enough red here to activate for three just by increasing peril by two. We'll go from 12 to 14. We'll deal one wound to your target plus one extra wound for every blue that we spend. So right now we're dealing one. I'm going to deal one or use one from the crypt. So that's two, three, and one more here. That's four, leaving one on the board. So we're dealing four points of damage, just enough to kill this rider, gaining two XP and removing him from the board. We'll move ourselves up to six XP. Moving to the knight, the knight is weakened with blue as its status token, so we're going to have to remove that final blue from the uh, field. I think then I'm just going to use our steel fists. We need to deal a total of five damage, so I'm going to drop three blue for sure. And I think that's it. And then we'll also do our peril cubes. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? Oh, lots of blue, which is beautiful, but <laughs> another red in there. That means we're going to push up peril by two again. We'll start with the red, so we're going to spend all three and just increase peril by two. That'll push us up to 16. What's that event going to be? Oh, we're just looking at getting weakened two more times, so we have two more status tokens, a green and a white, that's going to be placed onto the knight. And then we have two yellow to do our marionette, who will just deal one point of damage, putting us to 19 damage, and then we'll move up peril to 17. Ah, <sighs> but then I think... We're going to be able to kill this gal. Two blue cubes deals three wounds. Two more will deal the total of five. And we're also going to spend the one blue cube here to get rid of one of the blue status tokens on our weakened card. Oh, that's going to gain us two XP. We'll go to eight. And we finally cleared this blasted room. Now there's a treasure in this room. And it's the question of, do we want to go for it when our peril is at 17? That means likely whatever that chest effect is, it's going to happen. Now, the last one was actually a good one, but don't expect that. <laughs> I mean, what's life without a little risk, right? I mean, we, we at this point need everything that we can get. We're kind of in a tough spot. So we have the end is here. That's 18. Sweet. So I don't have to worry about that one. Uh, so we can discard that and we gain one treasure. Our one treasure will be the deflection stone. So this one is an exhaustion one so you exhaust it and then when we level up you'll uh, unexhaust it it goes to one player and it's a support so you'll have to use this as your support action either remove two cubes of your choice from the field or one cube from the crypt oh that's cool let's give that to the seer because the seer doesn't have any support abilities we've now completed floor two we now get to move to floor three which is on the back side of uh, the actual tower, so you can't see that. But now we're at our first mini boss. <laughs> Let's see what we're gonna fight. We have the Rat Queen. Now you can see here, this has the two symbols for the treasure chest, and actually it has the same symbol as the chest cards, but this has been confirmed that that means you draw two treasure cards, uh, but you still only draw one chest card from how I understand it. So we're going to have two rat swarms in the front rank and two rat things in the rear rank. Oof. So two black in the front, two red in the back. And then we have the regular peril cubes. She has no specific health. 
All enemies on the floor must be defeated to defeat the Rat Queen. Oh, so we just defeat all the enemies to win the game. And by the game, I mean the mini boss. <laughs> this is not the game. This is only halfway through. We do have peril events at 8 and at 15. And 15 is when we just lose. So we only have up to 15 this time. Here we have our two enemies, and this is going to be really interesting. Our rat swarms, which are in the front rank right now. When a rat swarm is killed, add two rat things to the rank it was in. So you're going to kill a swarm, it's going to turn into rat things. And then it has an effect for four red, or four black, sorry. Then the rat things, these guys are terrible, cannot lose its last wound unless every rat thing on the floor has already been wounded or is being wounded by the current action. And we have deal uh, one wound to the party. The active hero stricken once for every rat thing on the floor. Stricken, and you can, that's going to be a ton of those. And so we have to be able to hit into the uh, to the rear rank because we, we can't take out any rat things <laughs> until all rat things have at least one point of damage. They only have two health, though. Uh, these guys have six. We always seem to end on the knight's turn. <laughs> and that's not good for the seer. The seer needs uh, lots of cubes on the field. So she's going to do the help action first. She's weakened with two white and a green. So I'm actually hoping these two white and a green will drop out so we can just get rid of that weakened. Uh, and then we're going to do one of each. And I would love if we had a white on the board for her next time. She's one of the only ones that can hit the back and the front row with one attack. We'll drop our cubes. And, oh, nice, we got a white in there. Beautiful. We actually have a ton of white here. Two, three, four. We only have one of each here, so no enemy will activate. And, of course, that was just a helping action, so that's all we're going to do. Of course, I say that, and I forget. I'm going to use all three of these to remove all three of these uh, status tokens, and we are no longer weakened. We're going to see if our doctor can just slice through one of those rat swarms. We're going to use his thirsty blade attack. Now, that's going to exhaust it. Uh, we are then going to, because we're exhausting an ability or an item, you want to remove a cube of our choice. We're going to remove a yellow because a yellow would cause more rats to come out. I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> so we're going to drop one, two, three, four blue. We're going to do, we're going to go all in here, four blue, and then one of each of the peril cubes. We're attacking the leftmost rat swarm. I don't know if it really matters. It's just one of the rat swarms. Oh, we dropped a yellow in there, of course. We have two red, no activation, we need four. We have two yellow, we need a total of one, two, three, four, five on her card for that, so no activation there, and one black, and we need four. So no enemy activation, we did not get enough blue. We can deal one automatic wound, and I think I'm going to spend all three of these to deal four wounds to that rat swarm. There's our four damage, but they have six health, so still not gone. We'll move to the knight. Now the knight is technically weakened. Uh, we have no green, but we do have a white, but it's in the crypt. And this specifically states not the crypt, so we do not have to remove that cube from the crypt. Thank goodness. I think we're going to use our steel fists and use our crystal overlord this time. Okay, so that's going to give us a total of one, two, three, four blue, and we have one, two, three, four, five wilds. With the five wilds, we're doing two white and three green, but we have to use all the blue that comes out, otherwise we're increasing peril. And we can only get to 15, so that's risky. But look at this. That is an awesome uh, cube dump. We're attacking that healthy rat swarm, so we can use hopefully all the blue that comes out of the tower. Oh, wow. That was a bunch. I think only one dropped in here, though. Yep. Red, we only have three. We need four. Yellow, we have three. We need five. But black, we have four. So we're going to use all four of these, and we're going to activate the rat swarms. Deal two wounds to the party for each rat swarm on the floor. That's two. So that's going to deal four. The active hero is stricken once per rat swarm on the floor. So we're going to be stricken twice. So here's our two status tokens. And what is stricken? Oh, don't worry. For each status token on this card, the party suffers one wound at the start of your turn, and this can't be reduced. We're getting attacked by four, but remember, we do have one shield, so we'll just take three. Uh, that's specific to the knight, and we'll put the peril up by one. So we got kind of lucky, though, with our drop of cubes. We have this one that was in the crypt for two, so that's considered two. We're dealing three wounds for that, two more for five wounds, and the final two blue cubes for seven wounds, that's enough to just kill this rat swarm. Uh, we'll gain two XP, and then we're going to replace that with two rat things in that same rank. 
the two XP will also allow us to level up, and maybe I can find someone to, to grab an ability that can attack range. We also have no blue on the field, so that means we don't have to increase peril at all. That's why I felt like the amount of blue we found was just perfect. <laughs> and then I can get rid of our weakened by removing one of each of these. Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to do it. Uh, just that way I, I don't have to deal with weakened and stricken. I can't get rid of the stricken one, but I can get rid of the weakened status uh, by removing both of those status tokens. All right, let's do our level up. Our doctor grabbed the level two. We got to pick this since we already had a level two. The throwing scalpels. This is a projectile attack. We can choose a target in either rank. That's why I picked this one. One wound to your target for every green spent. And then if there's a green in the crypt that we spend, it, it gives us four wounds. That's absolutely amazing. We then did a random level three for the knight, and we got the grandfather's guidance. Use this skill three times. You may use the same ability multiple times. So we basically get this effect, any of those three effects, three times for the one support action. Gain one luck point, heal the party from one status to token, or heal the party for two wounds. And our final one, we have the Supreme Supernal Guide. This also was random because it's our first level three. Uh, the flying supernal skills that deal damage deal two additional damage. It's kind of awesome. Don't forget, whenever you level up, you also refresh all the cards. So you're going to see all of our cards have been refreshed. I am now going to use the Deflection Stone, though, for our support action for our Seer. Either remove two cubes of your choice from the field or one cube from the crypt. I'm going to remove the yellow from the crypt. I don't want to deal with that. Then I think I'm going to use my Flying Supernal Blast. This is going to give me three blue dice, uh, dice, gosh, cubes, uh, and I can deal three damage or actually four plus an additional, what, two damage? Six damage right now from this ability, and I'm going to, well, I have to attack a black enemy. Actually, it could be a red or a black enemy, but I'm definitely going to do the black rat swarm trying to take him out. So we're going to do the three blue, and then we have one of each of our peril uh, cubes. Let's hit him hard. Let's hit him hard. <laughs> we only had three cubes drop out. That was not expected. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have four red, and that means we're going to activate the rat things. This actually might be really bad. Deal one wound to the party. The active hero is stricken once for every rat thing on the floor. And we have four rat things. One wound isn't terrible, and moving up our peril by one isn't terrible. But stricken means we're going to take four wounds. We die at 27, you guys. One, two, three, four. There's our four status tokens. And remember, we can't get rid of them this turn. We have to get rid of them starting the next turn. And stricken means we're going to take four damage at the beginning of our next turn. Once again, I picked a poor time to play this card. You guys, I am not playing the Seer well. <laughs> I don't have a red on the board. I could use I have one luck for a red, but then I'm using a white for a double that's in the crypt. And I can, I, I mean, I'm just wasting a white. That's silly. I'm just not going to activate her effect. That is absolutely terrible. We're just going to leave that red black, uh, that black rat swarm. What I'm going to do for the doctor then is I am definitely going to use the field medic. I'm going to drop three white. I'm also going to exhaust our delicate touch so we can drop one blue and one green on the field. So now I've got two blue and two green on the field. And then each time you exhaust an ability, uh, I can also choose one of the en enemy tokens from the crypt and actually not from the crypt, from the field and remove it. So I'm going to remove a black cube. Let's see what we get. Oh, we dropped a green in. Oh, look at this. This is nice. I want to show you what we have on the field because we can do the field medic activation before the enemies go. What we can do is spend three of these to heal three wounds. We're going to go from 23 down to 20. Whew. We're also going to remove one of the yellow enemy tokens. Then for every single one of the whites that we spend in addition, we can heal by one more and we can remove another enemy cube. Well, this one was in the crypt, so we're going to be able to remove two. So I'm going to remove one more yellow and one more red. So both of these are going to be removed uh, from the field. And I'm going to heal for two more, which is going to put us down to 18 health. I'm still not sure if that's totally going to be enough, but we'll go with it. The reason I say that is because the knight is next. He's stricken. We are going to take two points of damage. That's going to push us back up to 20 but we can do our support action here. 
So I'm going to exhaust this and I can do this three times. I'm going to go ahead. Oh man, I like the luck, but I think for three of these, I'm going to remove heal the party for one status token. We have, uh, the seer has four here. I'm going to have her remove three of them. So the only one she's going to have left is this green one. I'm going to remove the other three. Beautiful. We're then going to use our chain gauntlets and we're going to drop two green and two white. And we're going to be able to target the black rat swarm. Let's see what we get. Oh, we got another white in there. That's awesome. Red needs four to activate, yellow needs five, and black needs four, so no enemy activations. We now can use our greens to attack. We only need two more damage, so I'm going to go ahead and use the green that's in the crypt to activate this deal three wounds. That's going to kill this rat swarm. We now have no more rat swarms out. That will give us two more XP, so we're going to go, well, two, and we're trying to get to 11. We're going to have to place out two more of the rat things. And then at the end of our turn, what we can do is spend one green and one white cube. So there's no more white cubes in the field. There's one in the crypt. We still have two green in the field to remove both of these status tokens. And that means we're no longer stricken. The seer though is stricken. So we're gonna take one point of damage. Uh, that will put us up to 21 out of 27. Just so you can see how the board looks, we have only two in the back. So what I want to be able to do is have both the seer and the doctor do attacks that can hit the rear, and then we can just start clearing these guys out. I mean, they only have two health. That means we're gonna have to do our projectile attack. So we're looking at three green and then one of each of the peril uh, cubes. I'm choosing the rat thing in the front left, the farthest front left one. This is looking pretty good. We have three black. We don't have a black activation until five. We have three yellow. We need five yellow to activate and two red. We need four. So we're good. So then I'm going to spend one green and one white to do our attack and one green to get rid of that status token so we're no longer stricken. This will let us deal two wounds to your target and an enemy directly behind your target. I mean, that's we can only do one point of damage to them, but at least we're hitting both of them. That feels pretty good. Now, what I want to do is have the doctor attack, but I'm a little worried about the cubes that are out on the board. All right, well, I have an idea. It's a risky idea, but let's try it. We're going to do a projectile attack. We're attacking the one other rat swarm in the second rank <laughs> uh, farther back. We're going to do two green. Uh, let's do three green just in case. And then one of each type of the enemy cubes. Don't be terrible. Don't be terrible. Well, that unfortunately was terrible. <laughs> We're going to have not enough red to activate, but we do have enough yellow to activate. That's going to push our peril to three. And the yellow ability is to add a blasted rat swarm to the rear rank. Now, we can still kill all of the rat things before we kill that rat swarm, which would work. Uh, and then when we kill that rat swarm, we could kill the rat things that come from it. <laughs> but it's just going to be annoying. We're then simply just going to spend one green cube to deal one damage to this rat thing. Well, my plan isn't going to work. I was planning on actually doing the regroup and clearing all of the cubes and increasing my peril by four, but I was hoping to do that before we had any sort of activation to bring in the rat swarm. Now, I don't think that's worth it. So instead, I think I'm just going to do this melee attack. I am going to target the rat thing on the farthest right. I know I can't kill him, but that's going to give me two green and two white. At this point, I'm just looking to find a way to get damage on all those rat things. Look at all of these cubes on the field. It's insane. First, we're going to have the rat thing go. We're going to spend all four of these. We're going to increase peril to four. Uh, and then we have deal one wound to the party. The nice thing is this is under the knight. He has one armor, so we're going to stop that. But then we're stricken for every rat uh, thing on the floor. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're going to be stricken six times. That means we have to have six of these. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And remember, stricken means at the beginning of his next turn, we're going to take six damage. And then, of course, we have enough black as well. We have four, one, two, three, four. Maybe we should have activated that last time. No, we didn't have a rat swarm out. That's right. Uh, they came out later. 
Deal two wounds to the party for each rat swarm on the floor. The active hero is stricken once per rat swarm on the floor. <laughs> so he's going to get another one. Uh, so uh, And we're going to be pushed up to peril of five. And two more wounds. That's going to put us at 23 out of 27 wounds. We are, though, going to deal one whopping point of damage to this rat using two green. <laughs> But now, I believe I have something that I can do with the Seer to deal damage to both of these, and we can actually start killing rats, uh, rat things because all of them will have one point of damage. Yep, we have it right here. We can drop these, deal one wound to your target and one wound to the enemy on the right or left side in the same rank, deal one wound to each target for each additional spent. That should be no problem. So we should be able to take out both of those, uh, both of those guys no problem at all. I think the biggest thing is with that stricken, are we going to get killed from it? We don't have enough enemy cubes for any activations. Let's go ahead and kill some rats. We'll spend one blue and one green to deal one wound to your target and one to one of the adjacents. And then we're going to spend another blue and another green. And that's going to take out two of these rat things, finally, giving us two XP. That will put us to four out of the 11. Since we just took out those two, he will have to slide over to here. And then this rat swarm will fall to the front. Our doctor at this point is our only hope. We have three white here. We've got one, two, three, four white in the field. Let's see if we can save ourselves. I want to see tons of white, tons of white. Just so you can see, I got tons of white. That's awesome. Black is one away from activating, but we should be good. I'm going to use the cube in the crypt for two plus one, which is three. I'm going to heal the party for three, going from 23 down to 20. I'm also going to remove one black cube. Then I'm going to use one, two, three, four, and I think I have one luck. I do for five. So that's going to allow us to heal for five more. We're going to go down to 15 wounds, and I'm going to remove three, four, and five cubes of the enemies look at that so that means they only have one red and one black on the field versus we have one two three four green and one two three four five blue okay the tides might be turning however we're going to take one two three four five six seven points of damage putting us to 22 out of 27 because our poor knight has been brutally stricken by all those rats uh, and yeah, I definitely want to get some white. Uh, he, of course, used all the white to heal, but I'm going to need some white to get rid of these tokens. So because of that, I'm definitely going to use the gauntlets so I can do two green and two white. Let's go ahead and attack the rat thing on the farthest left in the front row. We got one more white in the crypt. That's actually kind of nice. And we have a bunch of green. We have no activation for enemies. We just need to spend two green to go ahead and kill that rat thing. That rat thing's toast. That will give us one more XP. We're at five. We'll push these down like so. There we go. We have three more rat things to be able to take out. We got to clear some of this stricken, I think. So I have one in the crypt to remove two of these. I have one non in the crypt in the crypt to remove this one. And I definitely have one green and one blue to remove these two. So I only have two damage left on here. Moving to our seer, let's use our flying supernal punch. We'll use, we'll drop two white for that. We've got one black, one yellow, and one red. We're attacking that final rat thing in the front row. Let's see, whoa, that was a fly of a white way over here. Still no enemy activation, three out of four. We've got two out of five and two out of four. So we're good there. We'll spend one white and one green to be able to deal two wounds. This will take him out, giving us one more XP. We're gonna go to six out of the 11 XP for the next level up. He's gonna get pushed over by one. This guy's gonna drop. So we can take out one more rat thing before we have to take out this rat swarm, which will turn into two rat things. And then we need to damage them to win and defeat them to win this. Whew, this is a fight. And with any fight, it's good to have some healing. <laughs> so we're definitely going to do our field medic again with our three peril cubes. Let's see what we get. Oh, really? The red had to go in there? <laughs> Right now, we're looking at activating both the red and the black, but we get to go first. And with our field medic ability, we'll spend three of these to heal for three, going down to 19. 
We'll also remove one of the black so they won't activate. And then we've got one more white here. And I'm going to spend a red for that. He's still going to activate, but then we're, he's going to spend all the red cubes. Is that worth it? Or do I go for another black? You know what? No, I'm going to go for another black. So two black are going to be removed. And of course, we went down to 18 uh, damage in total. The rat thing will deal one wound to the party, but we have one armor from the doctor, so you don't have to worry about that. But then he's going to be stricken by two, but only by two. And we're going to do one, two, three, four. So we have one left. Stricken, so the next time that he activates, we'll take two points of damage. They're going to be green and green. We'll move to the knight. Now the knight is stricken by two, so we're going to take two points of damage, going back up to 20. We're going to use this one again, doing two green and two white. We're going for that final rat swarm in the front row. No enemy activation, so we're good there. We'll then simply spend these two to deal three wounds. I think that's going to be enough to take him out. We're going to gain our seventh XP. And I just want to show you, this is all we have left. One black and one red. So a rat swarm and a rat thing. We're going to do our spiritual arrow. So this one is a projectile attack. We're looking to hit the front ranks. We're going to only be able to target that black enemy. We're doing three green. But if we do this, we can deal two wounds to your target and an enemy directly behind it. So we can actually kill that rat thing behind us. That's the whole reason I wanted to do that. Let's see what we get. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. We have our five yellow. Man, I could not stop that from happening. So we're going to use all five. Our peril is going to go to six. And a rat swarm would try and go into the rear, but instead it's going to get pushed up to the front because there's nobody in the front to block it. But then we're also going to spend all four of these black cubes. That's going to push our peril up to seven. Remember, at peril eight, something's going to happen. And at 15, we lose the game. Uh, and we're going to have deal two wounds to the party for each rat swarm. There's now two of them. So we're going to deal or take four damage. One, two, three, four. We're at 24 damage. And it says the active hero is stricken once per rat swarm on the floor. So she's going to be stricken twice. So we've got two of these. I should probably show you a, a blue and a white. But now what we can do is use both of these to deal two wounds to your target and to the enemy behind. Enemy behind is another rat thing, which is gone for now. So we will increase our XP to eight. And we're dealing two out of the six damage to that rat swarm. And then do I want to? I'm going to. I'm going to spend another two to deal two more wounds to him. So he has four out of the six damage. And well, this is starting to get bad. We're going to be stricken for the doctor's activation. We're going to move up to 26 out of 27 health. We're just about dead. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get out of these rat, this rat swarm alive. There's just too many of them. I don't have the mage. The mage can do an attack that deals one damage to all enemies on the board. That would have been amazing. Also, I believe either the... Oh, I think actually, I think it's the doctor that has that too as a level three. Yeah, but I, I didn't get to level three and I didn't pick it. So, you know, see, that's... And that's on me. Let's see what type of healing we can do. We have a total of four white. So I'm going to go ahead and do three plus one, which is four. That will allow us to remove two of the enemy cubes. So the red won't activate. And we just healed for four. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, down to 22. Then at the end of our turn, we're going to remove both of these green. So we can remove our stricken condition. Unfortunately, our knight is also stricken, so that means we're going to go up to 24 out of 27 damage. We're definitely going to continue our melee attack here, doing two green and two more green. We've got to go green heavy here. Let's see what we get. We have no enemy activation. We can simply spend these two to deal three wounds. Those three wounds plus the four here means we get to defeat this rat swarm. Gaining us 2 XP. We're at 10 out of 11. Why don't we put out two more rat things? What do you guys think? No. <laughs> I don't want to either, but I have to. We're then moving to our seer, and unfortunately, we're going to take two points of damage from our stricken here. We are at 26 out of 27. If we take a damage here, we're going to lose the game. We're definitely going to use our flying supernal slap. Remember, this is going to deal three damage instead of one, and we can do it to one enemy and one enemy to the right or left, so that can actually take out both of the rat swarms. So I definitely want to do that. That's two blue. Let's see what we get. Oh, no. 
Well, I'm not even going to do anything. I'm just going to show you. I have my rat thing. Deal one wound to the party. We've got four, one, two, three, four, five. Nothing I can do about it. That will be our 27th point of damage we just lost against the mini boss. We haven't even gotten to the to the upper upper rooms yet. Well, there you have it. That was Stygian Society, and boy, do I like this game. I was having a bit of a harder time here. I haven't played with the Seer, and although I think the Seer is pretty cool, she's also, I think you have to have someone that's spending their whole time working on making her work instead of trying to deal with three heroes. <laughs> I don't think I played her very well, and it really cost the team. Uh, the four basic heroes with the burglar and then the mage and then the knight and then the doctor, those four are super solid and they work really well together. I'd highly recommend playing with those four first if you can. If you're playing solo, don't play with the seer. Play with something else. <laughs> um, sorry that I didn't even get you to see some of the wizards. Here, let me show you some of the boards. Here we have Jared. This is actually the one my son and I got up to. He had three health left, but he has an ability that if he activates all of his abilities in one turn, you lose the game. And we had the right cubes to beat him, but I rolled just the right amount of cubes to activate him and we lost the game. <laughs> he was cool. We have Emric here. We're going to have to reduce damage to him all by one. He's got tons of events, 45 health. Uh, we have over here, this one is uh, Serafina. Oh, look at this. These look pretty high up, but she actually has a, what a, a one demon as well. And she's there with 50 health. Oh, man. And at 18, you actually die instead of 20. Oh, just look at these. Um, we've got Eigenstein. Yeah, I haven't even, I, like I said, I've only gotten to Jared. <laughs> That's it. And I lost. See, I haven't won this game yet, but I, there's something about it. It is long, though. So be ready for that. So for whatever reason, I absolutely love this game. I think this tower is awesome. Look at that. I'm just getting more of the cubes out. Uh, I think the tower is awesome. I think the actions that you have. I mean, look at this. I still have all of these different skills that I could potentially be choosing from. And I could have picked different skills to do for different things. And also what's cool is the skills, they made them double-sided. So the other one will match the portrait of the female character, which is kind of cool. Uh, you've got all of that. We have all the different upper rooms. We didn't even see any of those. We've got lower rooms that we haven't seen. You can even make it harder with those uh, lamentation cards, which I don't know why I would ever do that. <laughs> And I just think the mechanic with the cubes is quite solid. One other thing I wanted to show you is all of the mini bosses have a defeated effect as well. So if we could have defeated that rat queen, as the rat queen is slain, the last few rats skitter off into the darkness, their beady eyes glittering with hatred. From now on, rat things and rat swarms require two extra wounds before being killed. Whoa, so cool. So all of these are a little bit different, like this one. Uh, this one here, it states, um, from now on, each time a black falls into the crypt, the active hero is incapacitated. <laughs> or how about this one? Uh, this one says, the deathless sentinel, final shriek echoes through the tower. From now on, a peril on each floor starts at three instead of zero. <gasps> wow. I mean, so just really cool different things, and it totally changes the game up each time. So yeah, I... I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. I, I have a feeling it is coming to retail. I know that they mentioned that, that they're hoping it will. I don't know, though, when it's going to happen. So I'll link to the BGG page, uh, and you guys can look up there, and hopefully there'll be some information there. Thank you all so much for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. This is probably going to get into one of my top tens of something, just how much fun this is. So, <laughs> yeah, make sure to check this out. I'll catch you at the next stop.